Anthony Riley, also known as Sleeping Warrior, is someone who thinks that he is the Leonardo da Vinci of modern times. He is an expert on atmospheric refraction, the relativity theory, density and buoyancy, lunar and solar eclipses. He even invented some new mathematical equations and definitions like 5 divided by 0 equals 5 and a number smaller than 1 is a negative number. To his phenomenal knowledge he now has added a whole new chapter. He is a master in trigonometry. Look at this fragment where he explains how navigation with a sextant can only work on a flat earth. What you then do is you want to measure the distance of the dotted line in time. So to measure that distance, because once you get a distance right, because we all know we need an angle and two sides, or we need two angles and one side. Well we need, in this instance, we're going to be using two angles and one side. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance of the dotted line in time. So I don't mean time is in hours, minutes and seconds. I mean time is in arc, arc seconds, arc minutes. Time in this instance is applying the inverse trigonometric functions and you can see by this clip that these are used to obtain an angle from any of the angle's trigonometric ratios. Inverse trigonometric functions are widely used in engineering, navigation, physics and geometry. So this is essentially what's being applied at this point. So we are measuring the distance of the dotted line as a length in time, not in meters or kilometers, miles, kilometers, anything like that. This is measured in time, so it's arc seconds, arc minutes, right? Once you get that distance, you've got an angle from the observer. You've now got a distance from the observer, which is the dotted line. But at this point, it's the only two, it's the only two values that you've got. You need a third, don't you? But the moment you get your distance in time, the dotted line, once you measure that distance in time, you then crop off the, uh, the, 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 the values, the infinite lines that we had before. The infinite lines are no longer infinite. Once you get your distance in the dotted line, you then get a 90 degree angle from your zenith, your vertex of your zenith, your highest point of your zenith. You get a 90 degree angle from there. So at this point, we now have your angle from the observer, you have the distance measured in time, number two, and you have your 90 degree angle, number three. But you'll notice now that the lines are no longer infinite. The lines are now cropped because we now create a triangle, a celestial triangle in the sky, not against, not against the ground. And this is irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. In short, he determines the distance to the geographic position GP of a star by measuring the zenith angle to the star and calculates the distance using that angle. Just by doing this, he has invented yet another unicum. Calculated one side of a right triangle with only one entry, the angle. He calculates this distance in minutes. He should have said arc minutes, but I'll let that slide. Somehow, he must convert this distance in arc minutes into a distance with an unit that expresses distance, like miles or nautical miles, or if he would be only slightly scientifically inclined, kilometers. But we all know converting units isn't the Fleurfer's forte, and using units properly is most certainly not Riley's forte. I guess that Riley will use the common equation one arc minute equals one nautical mile, although I'm not sure. But all of these inaccuracies are of no importance for how I can show how he is fundamentally wrong. He draws a triangle O, the observer, Z, the zenith point, S, the star. He has measured the zenith angle to be alpha and calculates I know, I use this word lightly, the horizontal distance to the star to be the distance alpha. This triangle has another distance fixed, the vertical distance to the star that, following the line of reasoning of Riley, should be the distance beta. Now we can look at two scenarios. 
one where the star is at the same horizontal distance from the observer but at a greater vertical distance and one where the star is at the same vertical distance but at a greater horizontal distance. In scenario 1 the angle alpha gets smaller but the distance alpha stays the same. And in scenario 2 the distance beta stays the same but the angle beta gets smaller. This is definitely an indication at toddler's level that the so-called method of Riley will not work and cannot work. An even simpler way to show this is to just slide the star along the line OS. You can see that both the angles alpha and beta stay the same, but the distances change considerably. By the way, this rather foolish way of proving that sextant navigation can only work on a flat plane is not only propagated by Anthony Riley. You can find this ridiculous form of mathematics also with Tenth Man, Brian's Logic and, of course, with my favorite mindless copy-paster, Nathan Oakley. Riley can use words like inverse trigonometric functions all he wants. He still is wrong. If he wasn't, he would have found one of the holy grails of mathematics solving for one of the three sides of a right angled triangle with only knowing the angles of the triangle. The nice thing about the Flervel's emphasis on the need for triangulation in sextant navigation is that it makes it so easy to debunk all of their claims. And to top it off, sextant navigation doesn't use triangulation at all.